This weekend I went to a boot sale and there will be a video specifically for that as part of the free game collection. That's what all this is behind me. We've acquired this for absolutely nothing out of pocket and I'm documenting the entire thing and you can look forward to that in a day or two. However, today I'm gonna take a look at one stall in particular. Now I didn't buy anything here and this is going to be somewhat of a pro tip but also I'm gonna contradict myself as well. When you're going around a boot sale and you're looking for anything specific, whether it be video games, whether you're a reseller, maybe you've just started out and you want some tips on how to get the good stuff don't dwell on any one particular stall so this is a prime example of what I'm talking about I walk up to this stall and there is a box full of PC games and many more besides in front there's loads of other things here I could have spent ages going through every single game seeing if there was any value I could have gone through the nerf guns to see if they were worth anything and a lot more besides these games were only a pound each now if I had money to burn I could have just said look how much do you want for the whole lot, bought them all, worried about it later, I'm sure my money would have been safe. If I could have bought them for about 25 quid, maybe 20 quid, then they definitely would have been profit there. Well, I'm sure they would have been profit there. But today, I am going to find out if I could have made money on this deal and should I have stuck around. The pro tip is, of course, not to dwell on any one particular stall because the longer you spend in one place and then you don't end up buying anything, you could have missed plenty of opportunities in three or four, 10, 20 stalls down the line. And that's exactly what happened here for me. I didn't buy anything here because I didn't dwell on it. I kept moving. And in the end, I did actually pick up a fair few things that probably wouldn't have been there had I spent longer at this one particular stall. So without any further ado, let's take a little bit of a freeze frame and have a look to see if I could have picked up these games and got profit off them as they were only a pound each. Now, I know they were a pound each because a couple of people were in front of me and they bought one or two and they moved on. They only paid a pound. So let's just assume they're all one quid each. Now take what I'm about to say with a pinch of salt here because of course for all I know they don't have manuals, they don't have CD keys, some of them are going to require CD keys. I'm obviously going to look at the CEX website as the easiest frame of reference here to see if they're worth anything and of course CEX will charge uh, maybe a little bit more than what you can actually get for these games but we're going to use them as a rule of thumb and we'll have a look at the trade price as well. So let's look at the box first. Uh, you have a lot of online games so you've got a lot of World of Warcraft, uh, Neverwinter Nights, there's Lord of the Rings, Guild Wars. A lot of these games are online and they will of course have like subscriptions and things. So some of them won't actually sell. They're worthless. You can go online and download the game. Some of the games aren't even still up. Do people still play Fantasy Star? That's probably blasphemy. I've got no idea. But in terms of the most valuable game in this box, as far as I can see anyway, we're looking at Half-Life Generation. Now, I'm using the CEX website, as I've mentioned. They actually only have Half-Life Generation 3. I don't know if that's the same thing as what I'm seeing here in front of me. They charge £12 for that and they would give you £4 in credit. I put a little asterisk next to that though because A, I'm not sure if it's the same one and we don't know about CD keys. We are going to assume, because the condition of these was actually pretty good, picked up a couple and had a look at a couple. I'm going to assume that all the relative, re relevant manuals and CD keys are present. So that's just we we'll, we'll, won't talk about that for the rest of the video. We'll just assume that they're there. So already we could have made £12. Now there are 59 games here in total, meaning had I shot an offer of 25 quid, you never know because there are a lot of worthless games here. There are a couple of football managers and there are a few of those uh, sold out sort of covers that generally don't tend they're, they're kind of like the um, the value games you get on consoles like the 360 classics for example so they are not really worth anything I would imagine the stall owner would know this and maybe think well 25 quid isn't actually that bad a price because I don't think I'm going to sell those cheaper ones anyway there are going to be a few games in this box as well that I haven't added up and the reason for that is because I either can't find them or because they're worth pennies peanuts almost they do still sell and you can still use them uh, but I have left them out so you've got the game 13 at the very top there that's two pound in CEX Old Republic is two pound in CEX Doom 3 is two pound fifty there is a Doom 3 expansion there which is one pound fifty uh, World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King I believe it's called I've not got that written down that's just memory uh, two pounds is what CEX charge for it the trade prices on these mental right so I'm saying two pound two pound two pound fifty CEX trade every single one of these in for 10 pence. That is 
harsh, even by CEX standards. I think game would offer you more. Game don't take PC games, but still. You've got Half-Life 2 at £4, that's a pretty good one, but the trade price is only 20 pence. Uh, you've got Half-Life 2 Episode 1, that's £2. We've already been through Generation. Halo 3 is 3 quid. Serious Sam Gold is £3 as well. Both of those trade in for only 20 pence again. Wolfenstein's an interesting one. You can see it right in the corner there next to Guild Wars 2, which incidentally is a £3 game. These are the prices that CEX charge for these. Uh, so Wolfenstein being an interesting one because it's the special edition, it's £4, they only trade it in for 20 pence. There is a Wolfenstein game that is quite old, I think it's about 13 years old at this point, maybe it came out around 2010, 2011. Um, it, it's actually a pretty good game, I really enjoyed it when I played it. It's £15 in CEX. It says offline only, so seemingly the servers are no longer up, but I never played it online anyway. Really enjoyed myself when I played that game on the 360. It's available on PC. 15 quid. If you can see it though, if you can find it anywhere, that's what I'm saying. There is value to be had in some PC games, and that's why I was very tempted to either shoot an offer to maybe buy the whole lot, or to spend a little bit of time going through these. Had I spent time going through these, I'm not sure whether I would have been happy or not, because the value at the end is a little bit ropey and of course like I said I didn't know about CD keys and things I didn't really want to take the risk. We're moving down now onto the uh, tarpaulin games if you will and you've got games like Far Cry there and Left 4 Dead and Orange Box. These are well known games, quite popular therefore you would expect them to not really be worth that much and you kind of be accurate on the Far Cry front. Left 4 Dead is in there of course and it's a £3 game, £20 trade. Orange Box which is obviously a fairly expensive game on consoles. I say expensive it has a little bit of a price to it, right? This one was a bit of an obvious one that it would be worth something. Uh, well, it was worth six, and it actually traded in for, I think, almost the most, apart from Half-Life Generation, traded in for £1.90. I'm going to cut in here, and I'm going to end the video in a different way. I was editing this, and I go on to show you all the prices and things, and I will still tell you how much CEX will sell all these for, and how much the trade price would be, but as you've probably seen by the amount of times I've had to put pop-ups on the screen, a lot of these games need to be sealed in order to be traded. Some of them need serial numbers, you know, we've been through this all before. When it comes to the Orange Box though, that did pique my interest because I thought surely a sealed copy of Orange Box would go for a lot of money, and I was right. The Xbox 360 version and of course the PlayStation 3 would sell for a decent amount, but the PC version sells for a lot. It goes for £100 plus regardless of the region. So the fact that this needs to be sealed in order for me to trade it in to CEX is a bit weird, especially considering they only offer £1.90. Whereas if I put it on eBay, I'm looking at £100 plus. They only sell it for six quid. I've got a lot of questions. Do they open it when you trade it in? And if they do open it when you trade it in, they've devalued that by about £94. Someone who wants that game brand new, are they're going to want it sealed. I would. It's going to give them confidence that this has never been used before. Some people are sealed collectors. There are a plethora of reasons why people want sealed games. Why then are CEX opening the game, devaluing it, put it on the shelf, for no one to buy it. I've only ever traded in sealed console games and they do say, look, I'm gonna need to open this if, if that's okay. And then of course I give them permission and they open it and they give me the trade value, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to PC games, I think it's a little bit different. I don't think they should be opening them. If they're absolutely certain this is a manufacturer seal, they should keep them sealed and put them uh, on the back, you know, put a display cover out and say sealed copy behind till, blah, 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 whatever it may be. And I, I reckon they would make a hell of a lot more money than just giving £1.90 for a game that they are then going to sell for six quid. They could put it up for £75 and give maybe 20 quid trade. That would entice people to maybe do it because they do actually have stock of Orange Box. Some people have traded in sealed copies of this game, which is crazy. So even though I wouldn't be able to trade in 50% of the games that are in this box, and I'm actually glad I didn't buy any of them, let's just go through the figures as if CEX would take them or as if I could sell them on eBay for the CEX. 
CEX prices and of course that trade price. So the total value of the games here according to CEX is £63.50. The trade value on those games? Pause the video, put your guesses in the comments right now because you're not going to guess it. £9.70. That is embarrassing. Now there could be many reasons why. There aren't that many PC uh, physical collectors potentially and to be fair I would believe that because I'm of that opinion as well. But £9.70 trade and then they go and make £63.50. 350. I understand they're a business, but that is incredible uh, margins there. Absolutely insane. I will show you the full video of me at this boot sale and what I picked up, what I decided not to pick up, etc. Like I said, that's coming in the coming days. I just thought it was interesting for me to go through it because I hadn't gone through it until this video. And I thought I'm going to stand here and I'm going to go through and see how much money I could have made if I bought the lot. And I honestly think 25 quid would have done it. What would you have done? Let me know in the comments would you have bought maybe a handful maybe would you have bought them all would you have even looked at them let me know what you would have done in the comments if you want to check out another video from me you can click here and until the next time goodbye